Sophie and Sam. Today we're going to be teaching you guys about hydrophobia. hydrophobia. Let's get to it. So hydrophobia is a characteristic of nonpolar molecules and anything that is considered hydrophobic is resistant to water. Um, in living organisms, hydrophobia is seen as lipid bilayers or the cell membrane, which is why your cells don't mix with water and that's why you don't you know, dissolve in water. It's why your skin can stretch, all of that stuff. Um, oil and water don't mix because of this hydrophobic property of oil and that's kind of what we're gonna be investigating during this project. This image right here shows what a hydrophobic material and water look like on a molecular level. And basically what these look like is the water will hit the material and form an obtuse angle with the surface, which is a droplet shape or a little beadlet of water instead of spreading out all the way across the surface. So like Sam said, oil is the most common example of a hydrophobic liquid and can be observed forming beads and droplets when combined with water rather than mixing smoothly together. However, not all hydrophobic materials are liquid. A material that would normally absorb water can become hydrophobic when coated in something that is. For example, mystic sand that has been coated in a hydrophobic silicone coating can become hydrophobic when mixed with water. This makes the sand remain dry after being mixed with the sand and is what we'll be showing in the next clip. So here is a slow-mo of the hydrophobic silicone coated sand entering water. Um, as you can see, um, the water is surrounding the sand, but not necessarily going through the sand. The sand isn't dissolving. As the water forms around the sand, they kind of form these Cheeto looking puffs. And that's because the water is kind of forming a jacket around the sand, as opposed to letting the sand distribute uniformly across the water. A naturally occurring example of a hydrophobic material that isn't liquid is our very own hair. Non-damaged hair is a great example of a hydrophobic material that isn't liquid. After getting out of the shower without washing their hair, one might notice how the droplets of water sit on your hair rather than spreading out and absorbing fully. The hydrophobia of water can also be reduced due to how damaged the hair is. Hair that is healthy is smooth and has no cracks, making it a good hydrophobic material. Damaged hair, however, while still hydrophobic, does a worse job at repelling water because it is cracked and can allow for water to slip into these cracks. This is why dam damaged hair often takes a longer time to dry than healthy hair. The hydrophobic properties of hair and oil allow for the oil to better coat hair than water could. This property of hair can be used to help clean up oil spills. Creating what is called a hair boom to clean up oil spills in an environmentally friendly way of removing oil from our oceans without adding any new chemicals. Currently when an oil spill happens, chemicals used to break down the oil into smaller pieces are dumped over these spills. These chemicals are effective in breaking down the oil into smaller pieces, but they don't fully remove all the oil from our oceans. These chemicals also stay in our oceans and are toxic to fish. Hair, however, isn't toxic or harmful to sea life and would be contained in a stocking-like material and could be removed from the water after being used. This means a hair boom would leave no lasting effects on our ocean and sea life and could do a better job at cleaning up oil than current methods. You will need a container, stocking, some oil, and some hair.
Wasn't that cool? Yeah. All right, we ran out of time. See you later. Bye. Bye. <laughs>